What's up, everybody, and welcome to Very Real Tournament, a comedy battle cast that pits two very real opponents against each other in a very real fight. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, I've traveled over half the internet to be here tonight. <laughs> I couldn't get away sooner because my new podcast was coming out on another feed, and I had to see about it. That podcast is now flowing at over 30 listeners a week. It's paying me an income of $0 a week. I have this podcast that I'm producing right now, so ladies and gentlemen, if I say I'm a podcaster, you will agree. Now, I'm a family man, uh, and I run a family podcast. These are my boys and my partners, Corey Music. Hello. Colin Sage. Hello. And Joey Potter. Hello. <laughs> Pardon, Joey. We offer the bond of boyhood, and very few podcasters can understand that's right, guys. That was my acting for this week. I hope I did well. I tried to do my best and, and really nail that monologue. Yeah. Nick, Nick, I give it an Oscar. That was honestly uh, really good because I was going to take the part of Daniel Playview as I'm already drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, your boy needed his Apex juice. Yeah. Um, because two <laughs> shots drunk uh, video game playing is real uh-huh. and you are much better. I was yeah. getting my ass stomped, stopped, went to CVS, got yeah. my shit. Came yeah. home, took a shot, won the next game. What a yeah. what to do? What to do? You came home, told the boys to go ahead and pack up their shit and leave because you got the apex juice. You <laughs> went to CVS right. and asked where the where the where the apex juice was, and they were very confused. They look That's like cool. a fool, uh, don't they? Yeah, the Joey, you got, I was just about to say that. You uh, sent those 12-year-olds a video message. You put a napkin over your face, and uh, you yelled at them that they were fools. <laughs> <laughs> they, they thought they were going to eat your lunch, but you ate all, their lunch. Yeah. Fair. You, you ate it all up. suck up their lunch. <laughs> Very fair. A touch and delicate, yeah. but fair. Yeah, that's right, guys. This week, uh, we're all... Let's take Joey's method, and, and I'm sure that two-shot gaming is the same as two-shot acting. I've acted with Corey Music on stage, hey, so I can tell you that two-shot acting is a thing. So let's all take oh, our wow. two shots, okay. and let's oh, do the God. best acting we can for this episode of Varial Tournament. We owe it to the person uh, that is the theme of this week to right. do our best job the, acting. Yes. The person mm-hmm. to our right. So I'm expecting a lot of really good monologues. Indeed. I'm expecting some... Real commitment. I okay. expect to wake up in a bowling alley. Ooh. <laughs> I expect to be really good with knives. Yeah. <laughs> I expect to look to my right and see my top hat. Where is it? And I expect to have to bail Joey out for first degree murder. Yep. <laughs> That's right, gang. This week, uh, at our good friend and fellow podcaster, Corey Music's behest, oh, we are doing a Daniel Day Lewis off. I never thought we'd get here, because usually we do action stars and not uh, celebrated actors. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, The Rock is celebrated as an actor, but, like, mm. not in the same way, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, not three Nick, you even on, None of you were even on that episode, okay? <laughs> it's true. None of us. Oh, my God, that's so true. Yikes. <laughs> Just Joey. And two ghosts <laughs> that haunt that oh, this God. podcast to this day. But no. So, yes. Two people he bashed their heads in with a bowling pin. <laughs> yep. Yes, two uh, conniving, villainous, crazy people played by Double DL, man. I'm very excited. Yeah. It's going to be double the Double DL today, folks. It's going to be very Ooh. fun. Shit. Yes, that's right. We have Daniel Plainview from There Will Be Blood versus... Bill the Butcher, or William Bill the Butcher Cutting, from Gangs of New York. His name is so Will Cutlery. It's so so great. That name is, what a happy accident, huh? Let's all do our acting warm-ups as the music plays. Let's go. I'm Nick Potter. I'm Joey Potter. I'm Colin Sage. Joey Music. And it's about to get very real. All right, boys, let's do this. I'm, I'm warmed up. All right, all right. Uh, Corey, you're going to direct me on this line reading. Okay, okay. Uh, Colin, give me a line. Let's go. Let's do it. I've abandoned my boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, good one. okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a flat one. I'm just going to give you a regular one. Corey, you tell me what I need to do to fix it, okay? All right, sure. I've abandoned my boy. Okay, so you've abandoned your boy. You've abandoned, you didn't want to abandon your boy, but you did abandon your boy. You've abandoned, I've abandoned my boy. Okay, I didn't. I didn't want to. Okay, but I did. Okay, yeah, so use that's that. what you're saying. So okay. use that. All right, all right. Go again. All right. 
Uh, I I abandoned my boy. Okay, okay, okay. I don't like that one. So let's instead. Okay, you let's totally, do it again. Let's, no, let's do it again. Do it. You totally fuck that boy. Okay, he's a piece oh, of fuck shit. Fuck that boy. You you wanted to abandon him. You're happy okay. about it. Go. Okay. All right. Uh, I abandoned that boy. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, you I did. like that kind of comedic. Okay. How about? Okay. How about you know. You abandoned your boy, but you also really are excited about sale at, like, Macy's or something, and you gotta get downtown, so you don't have time for the boy. You abandoned your boy. Go. Okay. I abandoned my boy! What's that? A Macy's? <laughs> Good thing he's not here to slow me down. See, that's... I did a little improv. What'd you think of the improv on top of that? It, like, it, it was... It took away from the subtext, but it added a lot more text, so I liked that. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, Corey, okay. can I cut in here? Sure, uh, sure, give I, it a shot. I feel like I, I need to direct you to direct him. I need you right. to add a little... While you're directing, Nick, can you add a little, like, Paul Dano onto it? <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, All right, give it a sh- Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Directors need to be led, too. They need to be directed, I guess. <laughs> sure. Who directs the directors, right? <laughs> right. All right, uh, so... <clears throat> Hi, Nick. Um, may I sit down? Thank you. Um, what will happen is you're going to do this for me, and uh, it's going to be great, and also God is a superstition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a false. I'm a false director, and God is a superstition. <laughs> I abandoned my boy. God, finally. Okay, now I'm gonna slap you a bunch of times, which I now realize is probably what Joey meant. I need. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. Hey, also uh, start <laughs> thinking about oil. You know, just like hot, okay. black. Man. Oh fuck, like acting's hard. You gotta think about a lot of shoot, stuff. Yeah, dude, shooting shit. out of the earth. The sky like, is all black now. Really fast. It's, uh, it's a- well, I must say. I really have a respect for Daniel Day Lewis now. Now that I've gone through the ropes, uh, basically the same way he does. Yeah. Um, Do you have pneumonia now? Achoo! Yes, oh well, man. Is that hope, pneumonia? I hope anyone listening to this episode has seen "There Will Be Blood" because <laughs> that was ten minutes of nonsense. We told them to watch it, Joey. So I imagine they probably should have. Yeah. If they didn't, well, now now you know. Yeah, I'd be surprised now if we still I just, have them if they haven't seen the movie. Right, exactly. Yeah, now I know they're poor because that's on U.S. Netflix, so... Hell yeah, I watch totally, that yeah. You want. I also got the exactly. Blu-ray, too. I'll send it to you, audience. Just text me your email, your, not email address, but your actual <laughs> address. <laughs> yeah, he'll sign it, but you do have to still send it back. He'll just sign it. <laughs> you, can, oh. you can take a picture of the signed copy of There Will Be Blood <laughs> yeah. by Corey uh, <laughs> Music. And by the way, it means that and, I'm signing and, it, not Daniel Day-Lewis. It's me. Right, Corey's signing it. You, he'll send it to you. You take a picture of it. Send the picture with the Blu-ray. He'll sign that picture and send the picture back. It's a very convoluted <laughs> system, and it works. And it'll be yeah. forty-five dollars, please. <laughs> oh, boys, Ugh, this is a lot of fun. Oof. But we do have a fight today. Oh, dude, yes. do we? It is bet- yeah, it is between two legendary characters, two of the meanest people I've ever seen in my life: Daniel Plainview <laughs> and Bill. The Butcher. Teams this week. Team Milkshake? It's me and Corey. We're bringing it all to the yard, my friends. Mm-hmm. And Team Beautiful Bangs and Top Hat. That's Joey. That's Colin. Chia. Great, what up? great men. Those are great men. <laughs> all right. Let's get down to business, boys. Joey, Colin, would you like to tell us about... Bill the Butcher, please. Nick, I am so glad that you passed this to me first. Because uh, he always does. He's sweating. I that, have my some input. things to say, and I want to know how you guys tricked me into this bullshit. What do you mean, Joey? Whatever do you mean? So you're like, all right, Daniel Day-Lewis off. Ha ha. There will be blood. Uh, fucking gangs in New York. And so I always start out watching the opponent's movie first, so my movie is fresher in my mind. Sure, and sure. So I sat there. I watched the There Will Be Blood. What a great film. I've seen it before. Knew it was a great film. And then last night, I fucking turn on Gangs of New York. And I swear to God, the and first it was 10 the minutes. Porn parody and you were <laughs> I thought I was getting pranked. I thought I was getting fucking pranked. I had no idea what the fuck I was looking at. <laughs> what do you mean? There were gangs and I, they were in New York, Joey. I'm not sure. Uh, no, I'm pretty clear. sure. I'm pretty sure they were in a tunnel in uh, Europe that doesn't exist in New York, and then they're all like almost like medieval, uh, medieval out, and then they walk out, and that fucking fight scene 
was so bad. Okay, uh, okay. It was so bad. <laughs> okay, yeah. The like the choreography was shit. Yeah. The blood didn't make any sense. Yeah. The hit detection. There yep. was no hit detection. Nope. Oh my god. What was that weird frame with the kid when small Leo Smeo. pulled out gotcha. the knife? Smeo <laughs> pulled out that fucking <laughs> knife and and the like the frame jumped. And then that guy runs into a building, and there's a weird speed ramp shot. There's a lot of what? weird early 2000s stuff in that movie. Duh. But this is Martin Scorsese. I know, I know. What the fuck was this movie? Joey, he he's Martin Scorsese, but he was still influenced by The Matrix. There's quite a bit of slow-mo I noticed in this Ooh, movie. Yeah. Uh, Bill the Butcher floats around a couple of times. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He it, puts on those sunglasses on the tip of his nose. Although Dude, he, absolutely. he's so good with knives, though, that it's pretty much bullet time minus the bullet time. I'm sorry, right. I couldn't I, fucking believe what I was watching. And well, I, I it just got went, a little bit better, and then it would get worse because everyone's accent was all over the place. Every single fucking person, besides uh, what's his name, Brandon Gleason, is that his name? Yeah, Brandon Gleason. Yeah. Yes, who's actually besides Irish. him. Yeah, it, exactly. All of their accents were all over the place because. You have Daniel Day-Lewis, and sometimes he just sounds like fucking Daniel Day-Lewis, and then he's like, oh, but I'm like a tough guy in New York, you know? And I was just like... Very nasally, <laughs> yes. What the fuck? I was I was mad. So I you, thought I was... I thought, Dude, there are shots in that that look like a high school fucking short film. So you didn't like this movie is what you're trying to say. I didn't like this movie. Okay. No. <laughs> like it at all? I will say, Joey, that I read that Martin Scorsese, and don't fucking... Hold on. He made sure that everyone's accent was from a... He didn't just want to have a main, like, Irish accent. Yeah. So they're all very, like, uh, from distinct parts of places. Yes. I understand that some of them are a little off, like, you know, Cameron Diaz it shouldn't be doing accents. Yeah, no, like, um, I didn't understand that Leo was Irish until his, like, sixth or seventh line. <laughs> because there were several that sounded like country, like Deep South. And then he would go into Irish, yeah. and it's like it it's was not that the accents were inconsistent between the characters. It was that it was inconsistent between individual characters, like their right. specific accent Scenes. would just fluctuate. And yeah, I could not handle any time a fight broke out, which that's what I have to fucking focus on for this fucking podcast. Right. And then I'm looking, and there's a dude in the background punching seven inches away from a dude's face. Yeah, maybe Martin like Scorsese? big scale. <laughs> Maybe big scale battles aren't like his thing. Well, either way, how is Liam Neeson like a six foot nine uh, Irish giant, um, and he's the only one with like a sharp weapon, like a broadsword, <laughs> and everyone else just has like wooden legs and the plain yeah. clothes, Can't and he doesn't leg. kill anybody. Yeah, Nobody. Uh... You think if you walked out there with a sword and everyone's got table legs <laughs> and there's no yeah. armor or anything? Yeah, it's very John Constantine. <laughs> Like yeah. you would just you would just start slaying fools. It's like, and then the fact that he dies and everyone's like, "Whoa, someone just died! Wow, this <laughs> yeah. is insane, the guys!" Like, this- well, they didn't know because every time they'd hit somebody with when Bill the Butcher would hit somebody, no blood would come out until four scenes later when it finally it's like it ramped up. Like he was hitting <laughs> people, there was no blood, and then it would just cut to blood. There were, the editing in this movie was fucking bizarre. It's like they took out frames. It's like that like scene. not even like cutting to a different shot it's like they took out four frames and it's like uh, what? no Martin this is Martin's crazy like bullshit this movie was bullshit so we got Bill the Butcher okay there we go <laughs> good old, hey, we forgot what we were good doing. old William Cutlery he <laughs> slice him dice him is Billy Knife boy he's uh he's a very Daniel Day Lewis he is uh passionate he is extreme and he you know what guys He's a fucking red-blooded American, so you know what that means? He's racist as shit. <laughs> yeah, he's racist as shit. Yep. And I noticed that at the beginning of the movie, because I was like, uh, gangs in New York, yeah, New York. I, I don't know the time periods. You know, I don't know when the fucking potato famine happened. I didn't know any of that shit the movie had to tell me. Uh, but yeah, what I noticed in the beginning fight is just like, oh, this is a fucking race war, is what this is. Um, so yeah, he... Uh, uh, hell yeah. Man, it's, it's hard because... What, what's always you guys had Daniel Plainview right? Who yes, we did. right is the fucking star of the movie? Daniel Day Lewis is not. He's the antagonist. He's the villain. So you, you get to know him in a very. This movie's The Departed, but <laughs> it sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
guess Jack Nicholson what? is the Daniel Day Lewis part. Yes, Leo yeah. infiltrates a fucking. It's the same thing. You're right. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the same uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. I was just furious last night watching this. But yeah, I can Daniel tell that Day you really had to get this off your chest, Joey. He's, and that's what this. That's what this platform's for. So I appreciate you about. giving me the, the the time to do so. But yeah, so you got Bill the Butcher. He's got uh, a glass eye mm-hmm. uh, yeah, with a motherfucking eagle on it. Because yeah. he's a goddamn American. He's, he's a goddamn American. American. Oh, he's God. wrapped in American flags, saying the N word and <laughs> hating Irish people the whole time. So you know that he's an American. Um, but yeah, he's just he's a gang leader. Is what he is. Um, yes, he is the most important gang leader in. Five. Like a five block radius. Five points, yeah. The fu- yeah, the five points. Yeah, which is, the, I, I assume this movie. The reason why I started with Liam Neeson in like medieval garb with the fucking broadsword <laughs> and shit was to like, give you like pull a fast one on you, and then after the fight's done, it like pulls out like village style. Where yeah. it's just like, it's New York the whole time. <laughs> it did do that. It did. You're right. <laughs> Uh, and then I thought, even it, though they're wearing top hats and stuff, like where did you think this was? <laughs> Wait, I know it's called Gangs Jupiter? of New York. What are you talking about? Like, are you only doing this for people who got dragged to this and don't know what they're seeing right now? Yeah, and I feel like they they do the the same vague thing with the influence of Bill the Butcher because he you know uh, eventually like runs the five points, right? And he runs the cops, but then he's like aligning with bureaucrats. Burist- that are like two miles up the street, five blocks up the street, because it pulls back. And New York's a big ass place. And then we had one set piece, which is I assume where all the budget went. I assume uh, Scorsese actually built that, and that's why it was all there. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. He's a fucking gangster. He's really good with knives. He is a butcher. He's an actual yeah. practicing he likes butcher. Likes cutting up meat. Yeah. Uh, Colin, take it away. <laughs> that, that, that was it. That's uh, all. Uh, I that's all you had. He to cuts add. up okay. meat, and he, and he likes to cut people. You know, he's he's not uh, afraid to get his hands dirty. Yeah. May I add though, he's yeah. also strangely right. honorable too. Let's talk about, you know, it's mm. a thing too for him. Yeah, very honorable. Right. He's an honorable man. That also, um, you know, we got to discuss this. This is the most important thing. Uh, does he fuck? Oh, he. Fucks. Yeah, he fucks. Uh, he but whoa, fuck. whoa, 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 whoa. You don't actually see him do anything. You just see ladies on him. Right. And he's got, like, a weird, like, distant look in his eyes. And it's very, uh, like, hey, I'm just pretending to be normal here. But really, I got, you know, some Frankenstein stuff going on downstairs. So, uh, okay. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Nip Tuck, how there was the guy who would pretend he was a player. But every time he saw him, ladies would just be on him. And he'd just be, like, staring dead-eyed. Like yeah. across the room, and then it turns out he didn't have junk. He was just like a. Oh, is, it was just a power the, play. Is that the spoiler of Nip Tuck? Do yeah. I need to not watch Nip Tuck now? Too yeah, much yeah, it was Nip Tuck. Um, I know that was a deep. That was a, de- <laughs> that was a deep, deep pull. Deep but tuck. he's like, I remember when the ladies are on him. You know, he's like staring off, and then he's like looking at Leo, and you know, he's not. He's not. Uh, he's not getting down. I, I'd agree with you, other than the fact that it's very obvious he sleeps with Jenny. I mean, like, at least before the movie starts. That's oh, I'm sorry, Cameron right Diaz. Yeah, Cameron Diaz, sorry. <laughs> Jen A. There you go. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of uh, does he fuck, our boy does definitely it? fucks. He, does he? He fucks the... He fucks no, the again. earth. Again. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <my bad. laughs> Didn't mean to jump on you. Uh, yeah, no, I had, it, I had it cocked and loaded. You weren't going to surprise me with any questions. He... He <laughs> penetrates the earth over and over. I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna shut the fuck up and let Corey tell us about Daniel Plainview. This is his moment. Oh my Go. god. Okay, so Daniel Plainview, guys, he is ruthless. He is he wants to he okay, so he has a competition in him, alright guys? He wants no one yeah, else to yeah, succeed. He, he hates most people. He looks at people and sees nothing worth liking, you know. That's his whole thing. He wants to own everything. And his whole story is like he pretty much moves into little Boston, California, because uh, a person who's confused Confusingly, the twin to Paul Dano. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Uh, we will. There's was, an explanation that I read about. Yeah, yeah, they, there was so another confused. actor, and then they got fired, and they quit. There was they, the yeah. co- the comic book explains it, and the cartoon <laughs> yeah, series. They, they wrap it up. <laughs> it's really it's an extended universe. It's great. 
Anyway, the brother tells him about Little Boston. He goes to Little Boston and buys the thing because it has a bunch of oil underneath. And that pretty much starts this feud between him and Eli Sunday, who uh, owns the Church of the Third Revelation. And the whole movie is about their uh, their feud. And uh, Daniel's just, uh, I think... Uh, journey to just destroy everyone to prove to everyone else that he's the best and like he says he wants no one else to succeed and i think he means that amazingly literally you know what i mean he wants no yeah. one else to succeed at anything his son while, right his brother while we murders. have while we have a charming psychopath you guys have a charming sociopath exactly yeah. Abs- oh yeah Pretty dude true. this he is the coldest dude ever he just like he literally just abandons his, his boy, son yeah. on a train. He literally just like is like, okay, I'll, I'll be right back. I I'll, talk to you the stay here. I yeah, will say though, like, Nick, if Quinn tried to light you on fire, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and, and she couldn't hear you. Okay. <laughs> what, so, like, J- Joe, here's my answer, Joe. All right. Um, I if I'm making the same money as this guy, I'm gonna fucking just learn sign language. Oh, okay. Just learn it. You ain't gonna like, like the last scene he has, hold on, Nick. That's he witchcraft. Talks to him. Like, you know, he doesn't write anything down. He's like, I'm gonna go. I'll be right back. Like, have you learned nothing about talking to your son? Uh, well, crazy. the boy also learns nothing. Like, it's not like he's deaf from birth, and he's a smart kid. And then all of a sudden, because he can't hear, he just like loses all sense of the world. And he's just like, "Well, I'll just be a crazy kid yeah. and light stuff on fire and just like scream incoherently." Well, he what was I jealous thought... because Daniel had a new partner yeah, that could actually speak and talk. Yeah, he, oh, I thought yeah, he I was get like, that, but he was. I very, thought he was you know, figuring out that the brother was not who he said he was. He does look at the journal. no. He was uh, Joey. Yeah, he looks at the journal. He might have figured that out. I'm not sure. Yeah. But no, right. Nothing but is besides ever that it. scene, it's like even the boys like. Uh, he, at first, he's like, "I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything." But then after that, he just acts like a little like wild child. Yeah. Until he right, grows like, up, he but still I'm like, remember, what? Like I understand when he's an adult and he speaks to Daniel and he has that like you know uh, inflection from not being able to hear anything. Yeah. But like. When you just lost your hearing like a day ago, you can still be like, I don't think this guy's your brother. Also, or can you write that down, Dad? Also, yeah, Colin, can you get a chalkboard? Fast, I was going to say, real fast, also keep in mind that like Daniel Plamey made him drink like five shots of whiskey before all this happened. So if you're a drunk child who's 10 years old, what would you do? He was also deaf. I don't know. I'm just saying he just like instantly lost all his uh Obviously I eat some fucking kids' lunches at Apex, dude. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 there you go. Not learn from earlier. That's you what li- I do when I take five shots. I told hey, you, you literally go do. eat kids' lunches. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, so Daniel Plainview. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's he's a cold blooded motherfucker. He will do yeah. anything to win. Anything. And, uh, he's conniving, every- he lies straight up, like he promises people things that he will never do. He promises prosperity, a little Boston, schools, bread. Mo- you'll have bread coming out of your ears, ma'am, and none of it happens. He doesn't give a shit about anybody. It kind of yeah. reminds me of uh what's his name from Django? Uh Christoph Waltz. Uh, Christoph Christoph Waltz. Like a little bit, where he's just like he's can put on that Yeah, like put on that like uh, that song and dance, like charisma, but is ruthless as shit. He's a bounty hunter. He's more, although I'd say his ruthlessness is used more towards good as opposed to just. Yeah, kind of, like, I'm just meaning like personality wise. Yeah, like just kind of like uh, performance wise. Right. And also, as Joey but implied, yeah. uh, Daniel Plainby is also an alcoholic, and that becomes severely more apparent as the movie goes on. I did like the. the it wasn't. I, I don't know. The word's not subtle. <laughs> but the 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 non focus on it for so long. Yeah, it's just kind of like, happening in the background. Yeah, it like ramped up, but no one's just like sitting there being like, "You got the devil's water in you," like all that <laughs> garbage. Like Paul Dano's like, um, "You have the devil's water in you, man." Yes, I do, Eli. Which is one of my favorite lines. <laughs> of the movie. Well, your yeah. farm has the devil's diarrhea in it, and I need to open up that diarrhea hole. <laughs> I need that diarrhea need- for me, ma'am. You'll have diarrhea coming out of your ears, ma'am. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so there are several actors that I found. I, I love like diving into this and finding the thing. So, okay, uh, e- some of these act these actors I'm gonna list they have their thing where they're like the best at that thing. You got Tom Cruise, really good at running. Right. He looks sure. amazing while he's running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then uh, you could even like lump, I. For a while, I didn't put Samuel Jackson into this list where it's like Samuel Jackson's probably the best at saying motherfucker. But that's sure. honestly like, like, duh. 
Uh, then, right. you, then you have uh, Matthew McConaughey, really good at uh, driving a car. <laughs> yeah. And like he pa- looks so relaxed, pa- pondering in a car. They even put him in a fucking Lincoln commercial. Yeah. Uh, then just recently, I found out what Chris Pine is the best at. Getting his ass Get beat, punch, punched in the face. <laughs> reaction yeah. shot. See, you got it too, Colin. He, he looks am- He looks so he good, goes, just oh. getting his fucking ass beat and like being kind of bloodied but still cocky, that kind of thing. And I was trying to pin down what Daniel Day Lewis's thing was, and I think what it boils down to is that he's really good at having a mustache. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. agree. And okay. I will say though. I'm not even saying that he has the best mustache because that go that can you can talk about Tom Selleck and and Chuck Norris. He's the best at having a mustache, utilizing the mustache with his facial expressions. He does a lot of the like the hmm, and I had to <laughs> make the noise a lot more because you can't see me. But just like yeah. moving the mustache around, he is the best at having a mustache. He's pretty good. Or facial hair. I agree. Which is funny because Lincoln is like the opposite of a mustache. It's like everything right. but the mustache. Right. Yeah. And that's why that movie wasn't quite as good as it should have been. Yeah. If he had a mustache, yeah. I'd be like, wait, Lincoln didn't have a mustache, but this performance is great. <laughs> best, be, best theoretical mustache goes to Daniel Day mustache. <laughs> also, I'm retiring from mustaches, guys. Sorry. There's some uh, mustache vampires in that movie for sure. <laughs> what the fuck is up with Daniel Day Lewis in the late 1800s, early 1900s? I know, dude. Lincoln, yeah. uh, this movie, and all Americans too, like super Americans, not just Americans, super. And he's British slash Irish. And also, he hates the Irish. What's what, what's, what's up with this guy? <laughs> well, everyone, if you were American, I guess you hated the Irish in the late 1800s, yeah, right? Like sort of, that's. Yeah. I guess Lincoln probably right. didn't. Maybe he did, though. Maybe, like, every scene after they said cut, Lincoln was like, this fucking Irish, though. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Yikes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Tommy Jones is like, I don't know about that, man. Like, <laughs> I feel like this movie definitely was a, uh, a precursor to Lincoln, or Gangs of New York was definitely a precursor to Lincoln because... He stabs Lincoln in the face. He, he stabs Lincoln in the face and wears what is it like the 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 top hat? Uh, the, super the top, top hat. hat. What's this? What's this? What's the super? It's like a pipe stove. T- uh, stove pipe. Hat. Oh, stove pipe, pipe hat. Good. Stove pipe sounds yeah, good. Yeah, there you go. I think it's yeah, stove, stove pipe. Yes. pipe hat. So it's just like, how are you gonna wear a stove pipe hat in the same era as Lincoln and then go on to play Lincoln? You <laughs> fucking animal. Yeah, he should have turned it down for sure. Yeah. I guess. Give this one to Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> but All there right, weren't man, really we're any slaves, <laughs> There weren't really any cars to drive so he wouldn't have looked that good. Guys, right. let's just did think Link, about that scene j- in Interstellar Link, when he's driving away from his family and he's crying. Are yeah. you not sold? I still haven't seen Interstellar. I will say this, Joey, uh, like that scene where he abandons his child, which is what we just talked about, <laughs> and he drives away that Model T, that would be a lot cooler if it was Matthew McConaughey. Like, yeah. All right, I just abandoned my child. All right, all right. Can Abra- Does Abraham Lincoln do a lot of running in Lincoln? Because then we can get Tommy Cruz He's in He's running from the House of... <laughs> the, the Senate in the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know he's doing that. I gotta Absolutely. save the boat. Tom Cruise has gotta be in this movie. So we obviously know that this fight is gonna take place in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah, around yeah. that time, the 1860s ish. You know, a lot of stuff going on. Daniel Day Lewis is also Lincoln somewhere, but he's not in this fight. <laughs> right. Oh, we should have done a oh, like a four a for all. Yeah. We could have gotten Hawkeye in there from Last of the Mohicans, too. <laughs> or you could have done a three-for-all, and I could have not watched any of these movies, because Gangs of New York seemed like a fucking parody. Yeah, I mean, like, the, all the, like the fucking, like the fuck, yeah, the fucking, like, firefighters show up, and it's like, it might as well be fucking uh, the Three Stooges, and then you have the, like, the other ones show up, and it's just like, what's gonna happen? And then they all start bonking each other on the head while they're in fucking pajamas. What was this fucking movie? Fair. Joey, those are old. Those are old timey fire brigades. They were run by just like regular people. That's they were fair. run Sorry. by comedy and, uh, writers. Everyone wore those pajamas because you couldn't have zippers because the devil yeah. lived in the zipper. Uh, it was yeah. easy, you know. You had to have the buttons. They were run by the Three Stooges, though. Yeah, yeah. Harry, yep. Mo, Curly. Right. I'm sure if you asked Martin Scorsese, he would just say "Whoopsie Daisy" and uh, close the door on you. Yeah. See, that was oh, yeah. the five points. You had Liam Neeson, you had uh, Daniel Day Lewis, and you had Mo, Curly, and other. I already forgot <laughs> the other one. <laughs> what? Harry, I believe. <laughs> the well, three the, stages. Yeah. Fuck. The, the five phone. points. Was it, uh, uh, yeah. 
Mo, Larry, and uh, Mo, Larry, and Larry. Uh, that's I it. Forgot Larry, Shemp. I guess. Don't forget Shemp. Guys, we don't need to worry about the three Stooges. It's 2020, okay? All right. Uh, well, the five points for Martin Scorsese are his uh, five cocaine fingernails on his one hand <laughs> that he does all that blow with while he writes his movies. I so sometimes they're not winners. Movies. Sometimes they're not winners, you know? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's all I right. Just, I'm, so, I'm sorry you're so mad about this movie, Joey. I didn't expect to be this mad. That's why I yeah. thought I was getting pranked because it, it when it started out, it looked like it was shot by like film school students. It was I could like my jaw was just like dropping. And I was just like, <laughs> "Are you fucking kidding?" I know it's like, it, but it's old, but it's not that fucking old. <laughs> it's not that fucking old. And there were some shots where it looked like Leonardo DiCaprio is walking on an aqueduct in a soap opera period piece. <laughs> just like. Mm, oh. Sorry. I think that he was probably trying some new shit. It was the early 2000s. It was just so like everything was bad. Let's shoot this in 30 frames on a $2,500 camera. Is that the new yeah, the techniques? Way th- <laughs> the way they would do it in the late 1800s. Oh, he was, he was trying <laughs> he, to emulate. He had one of those crank cameras the whole time. Yeah, one of those dirty Irish cameras, you know? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Stupid potato cameras. Uh, Every corner there's a fucking camera. Fucking so, bitch. boys, we got the, the time period of this fight. Yeah. I think the motivation for it is obviously that Daniel Plainview finds oil underneath the five points, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. He he, he, I, I think that Daniel Plainview wants to own everything. Now, if you imagine, he starts his journey in California. What's in the most east of California? Well, a lot of things, but the purpose of this conversation is New York, <laughs> yeah. okay? Absolutely. He wants to, yeah, he's gotten the rest of the United States' his oil. He owns all of it. Yeah, which is funny because that, needs... that movie, is very, Standard Oil, has a monopoly on the whole thing. There was a big Supreme Court case about it. Do your research. And uh, we can use that and say Daniel Plainview also has a monopoly, and he's he's going to soon reach the five points. From Little well, Boston also, to the five points. You know, yeah. uh, Daniel Plainview wants to own everything. Uh, Bill the Butcher wants to own everybody. Yeah, and everything Whoa. too he says like that while talking to DiCaprio, like, look around you, I own everything, everyone pays the price, everyone owes something, you know, that whole bullshit. I'm gonna tap my glass eye with my knife and it's gonna haunt me. <laughs> it's gonna be, I always also have an American flag over me in case you forgot I'm an American. <laughs> yeah, that was very I'm Superman Apollo returns Creed. of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my I'll favorite see you guys one's later. Rocky Four. The scene where <laughs> Well, I can't talk about his race because I'm told the butcher. Forget it. This joke. Cut it out. All right. Perfect. I will. <laughs> uh, Didn't go the way I wanted. So, okay. And, yeah, every, obviously I think that, uh, you know, he can uh, – get all everything around the five points because as you know he got everything under William Bandy's uh you know slant drilling. area his, his yeah. slant drilling yeah he slurped uh, it he slurped it all up although i think that we're Ooh. skipping ahead a bit cuz wouldn't you imagine nick that like in the movie he would uh, i can imagine like him coming into five points where's where's bill the butcher um, I, I, I very much like to speak with him um uh, is he is he anywhere around? And then Bill the Butcher's like, that's fair, that's close enough. Next time you come back to me, you know, make sure you have something. This could be a very tense matchup in terms of like a negotiation that we can both imagine does not go very well. Oh, he tells right. him he wants to be there to hunt quail. <laughs> <laughs> I hit yeah. a lot of quail in five points. Um, uh, he, yeah, boy loves quail. Uh, I, 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 I really appreciate. I'd really appreciate it if you hunted the Irish. And he's like, <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> just just quail. Me and my boy are here for the New there's York no, City quail. Yeah, no They're quail called pigeons. You is lots of Irish though. They're called pigeons. <laughs> Learn the fucking <laughs> slang if they're gonna be in five points. Also, watch out for that draft. <laughs> it's coming. By the way, here's this person who's totally not the son of my enemy. That's a lot of scenes in that, too, where he's just blatantly talking to DiCaprio about his father. He might as well yeah. say, I really hope you're not his son, by the way. Anyway, yeah, that'd be really ironic. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to push that in your face, but hey. <laughs> anyway. That's the thing that we haven't gotten that we really need is for Daniel Plainview, or sorry, Daniel Day-Lewis to do a movie where he plays two roles. Yeah, that'd be crazy. And he has lots of conversations Ooh, yeah. with well, himself. But think about this, guys. I thought about this. DiCaprio kind of swindles Bill the Butcher. Henry also swindles uh, Daniel Plainview. So I think both. it's interesting that both these folks have... You know, people lying to them and that's true. Them. And uh, Bill the Butcher just like embarrassed him, and Daniel Plainview shot Fucking him in the face. 
And also, like, that shot him in the face like, really and buried nice him in a hole in the saying, ground. I'm sorry. And then DiCaprio's like, I'm not sorry. In fact, I want to murder you. And the opposite happens. It's very strange. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, Plain View is probably in the five points trying to work anyway. something out, and it does not. It does not I'm here out. to hunt potatoes. <laughs> I hear you have a lot of potatoes, and I would like to hunt them. <laughs> <laughs> no bread in five points. <laughs> I'm a sociopath, you see. <laughs> the sociopaths who work for me work for me. <laughs> if you thought I wouldn't kill Irish people, you're a fucking fool. I hate most Irish yeah. people. Uh, and then he puts a white cloth over his head and he rides around <laughs> and kills me. Oh, God. <laughs> this is my family, you fool. So if it doesn't work out, then eventually, like, so it's funny too because in there will be blood. I feel like he kind of swindles Bandy and tries to like he makes a deal with Union Oil before he even talks to Bandy. Really, if you think about it. So what if Daniel Plainview's trying to like? There's that guy in um, Gangs of New York who was sort of the politician who eventually talks to DiCaprio, right? Right. Yeah. So what if that guy is like, hey, I hear that you were trying to, you know, get one over, build the butcher. I'm down with that. So he's got kind of a teammate that's inside little uh, the five points. Mm-hmm. You talking about uh, Slughorn? Yeah, Slughorn? that's who he's talking about. Who's what? From Harry Potter. Yeah, oh yeah, it's Harry. It's a Harry Potter. He's also thing. the bad guy in Hot Fuzz. I remember him from that. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's what I. He's yeah. also the bad guy in Around the World in Eighty Days. Oh, is he with Jackie well, no, Chan? Up. Yeah. With Jackie Chan and Steve Coogan. Yeah. That's a great movie. <laughs> I have not seen that one. It's very good. I want to go Around the World good. in Eighty Days. Con, let me ask you this. Was there silly, fun karate happening in that movie? Absolutely. And there's yeah. like 10,000 uh, cameos from famous people. Yeah. yeah. I think like every I probably, person they run into is like a famous person. I'd probably like that more than Gangs in New York. The reason I said fuck you is because <laughs> why do you know that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a great movie. It was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's last cameo before he uh, his last role before yeah. he became Died. governor. Wow. Before he died. But yeah, yeah, also, Joey Collin is a huge fan of the fun, goofy karate genre. Yeah. yeah. Which it's is a, a genre. So, genre. Early 2000s it, Jackie Chan movies. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, the it's Tuxedo just. It's his favorite movie. It's crazy. 1990 Jackie Chan movies and in, in 1980s Jackie yeah. Chan movies. Yeah. Those are the Rush Hour movies, the Shanghai Night movies. Well, uh, Shanghai Noon is the better choice of the two of them. Let's be clear, audience. Sorry. I, I meant, yeah, like all of those. Like the Tuxedo, the other one we talked about, the Medallion. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then those. And that's the entire fun, goofy karate genre. Yep. It's a monopoly if I've ever seen. All right. One. Yeah, bulletproof monk with Sean William Scott. We're not counting that. I want right. to get into the. I, I want to get into the young karate business. Um, <laughs> I want. I don't want Jackie Chan to succeed. Uh, I'm a karate man. <laughs> this is my son and my partner, Jackie Chan. <laughs> anyway. uh... So here's another thing. So you got this politician who could be working with Daniel Plain Vito, sort of, you know, like, can I own, why don't I own this? Don't be thick in front of me, Al, which is also yeah, a great line yeah. in that movie. Yeah. But, um, but also, Daniel Plain can buy people. Like, can you imagine? He can buy people. So what does Bill the Butcher really have? Numbers. Right. If you he, buy doesn't those have, people, he doesn't have a lot of money. Yeah, he has all the money. That's kind of the whole point of the movie. Yeah, he has what all the money. Argue? And not only that, not only he will just like kind of like meet with his enemies like in broad daylight, and he will also kill his enemies in broad daylight. Yeah, Bill the Butcher does murk Brenda Gleason in broad daylight. After he was like pseudo elected sheriff, he's just like, hey, there's a <laughs> sheriff. And then everyone in town that has brought been brought focus to this thing, I'm going to murder him with his own weapon in front of all of you guys and then just like peace out. And everybody's like, yeah. I stabbed the sheriff. I did not stab the deputy. <laughs> Good day to you. Well, yes. uh, I don't know. Is Bill the Butcher making 5000 a week just from one family? Because that's how much Daniel Plainview makes from one oil drill. There might... Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. What's the inflation between this fucking Civil War and the Great Depression? <laughs> well, okay, hold on. Just for clarification, what exactly is the year that... We are in with, uh, with Bill the Butcher. If we're going to play this Le- game, we have to pretend like there will be blood. Like this story is probably a okay. prequel to There Will Be Blood because that story starts a little later than. like it, That story starts in 1898. So probably he's. Yeah, it, it goes to like 1927 or something. Yeah, it goes from 1827. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, the DiCaprio version 
1862. Yeah. So that's, okay. So that's when it when it starts. When okay, DiCaprio's, so not, not much of it. Uh, he's yeah. not. Smeo, is that what we call Sme- it? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, like the Smeo year was 16 yeah. years the prior Smeo to that. Yeah. Before and after, yeah. Unless, you know, unless Daniel Penn yeah. was like, I've invented, I'm a time machine, man. I, uh, the time travelers who work for me work for me. I'm going to go back to every single episode of Growing Pains that Leonardo DiCaprio was on, and I'm going to change the credits to Smeo. <laughs> and then I'll put that in a YouTube video, and it'll get no views. <laughs> Sounds like, uh, sounds like what I'm used to. Oh, just, nice. Then you I just a... title it Growing Pains Intro, but instead of Leonardo DiCaprio, it says Smeo, and I'll just see how many views I get. Yeah. And you well, make a sick meme where it's like Smeo, and then it's like an Oscar, and it says it's the precious. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, see? It'd be a Smleem, a small Leo <laughs> meme, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Idiot. We really got to the uh... bottom of this, just like the oil, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Yeah. We did. We drilled this well dry. <laughs> I love that scene. That reminds me, Nick. That scene. One of my favorite scenes of There Will Be Blood is like when Plainview is like looking to his partner Fletcher. I think his name is. He's. Mm-hmm. What are you all mad about? There's a whole ocean of oil. <laughs> Fletcher's face is like. What about your boy? This is really funny because. Like, yeah, but don't don't you have a son? <laughs> Plain, yeah. Plainview should. Say, you can buy four thousand. I can buy you all the sons you want. Like, <laughs> I don't care. This is really funny to me. Because he's ruthless, audience. That's the whole point. Well, well yeah, well, people are just props to him. H.W. was a prop. His brother was a prop. Mm-hmm. What if you well, replace H.W. Right. and Henry? Oh, yeah. This yeah. movie would be a I, lot darker. I think uh, he's going to go to the five points. And much like uh, that old uh, The Bandy tract, he's just going to start uh, hammering in like <laughs> uh, like si- like uh, markers, mile <laughs> markers in the middle, Just in the middle of the street. <laughs> Yeah, into yes. the concrete I mean, in the middle of the that street. Right out, that boy was like, "Yeah, we don't like you. Uh, my dad will be back later. Like, go away." And then he's like, "Okay." And he walks five feet away from the house in <laughs> plain view of the kid, and he just like starts hammering in a marker. I guess yep. right outside the. I was like shop, that. Like this fucking. What is? What is he even doing? Ah, uh, it's just quail. Don't worry. <laughs> There's Shut quail all quail. over New York. <laughs> and John C. Riley's like, well, it's not much quail around here. I know I just did God, a country Why accent, was John C. Riley in this movie? Ugh. Because he was in why is everything he in, in early Why is he in uh, the H- Holmes and Watson, Joey? He's made worse mistakes than this. I yeah, you'd say, work with Martin Scorsese. I wouldn't say that he made a worse mistake by being in Holmes and Watson. I'd say that Scorsese made... Uh, it's not that he was bad. It's just... it. It's jarring to see John C. Riley places most of the time because he has become in himself like a meme. He's a goof master supreme. Goof I know, but and then when supreme. You have to understand that at this same year, I think he was nominated for an Oscar for Chicago. So this is yeah. back in the prestigious day for No one John watched C. Riley. that movie. You what? fucking nerd. What? You that fucking movie beat nerds. Games of New York. And that movie's great, dude. Hey, I'm gonna reach for just- the gun, motherfucker. Just a yeah. few years wow. earlier, he was playing a porn star. So, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Boogie you know, Nights. you think he's his goofy and his skull is weird. Just, just think about him and Boogie Nights. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah. You got to remember that he was serious before he became Goofmaster okay, Supreme. No, Joey, so. let me ask you this, and this is serious. Yeah. Uh, okay. we're, we're joking, but seriously, would you rather have John C. Riley or Mark Wahlberg in that role when it comes to Boogie Nights stars? I haven't seen Boogie Nights. See you later. Oh, I have seen his well, fake penis. So it's what you're trying to tell me is Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah. So what you're trying to tell me is you didn't watch the movie, but you went ahead and watched the uh, supercut of the penis. I mean, <laughs> yes. I guess, but it's just like a in every like internet list ever about movies or whatever. Penises? It's just like remember oh, Mark Wahlberg's giant fake penis, and then it's just like, well, you ha- I have to see it. Yeah, I'm not blaming you, Joey. Yeah. I get it. We've all trying seen to, it, right, guys? All to... four of us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. See, and I haven't even seen the movie to do so because it just well, the, it came right. it came to it came to me, you know. Where right, Mark right, Wahlberg's right, right. a great man. He's got a fake penis just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, that. Okay. Man. I respect that man. You see his portrait downstairs, <laughs> Joey. His portrait. What are you, honey juice in your voice? <laughs> Sorry, but okay. So I'm a penis man. I dig in the <laughs> pants. And that's what I find. I find your penis and I pull it out. The penis man who worked for me worked for me. <laughs> oh, Jesus All right, Christ. boys, let's straighten up here because okay. what we're doing, uh, it looks like, yeah, they have the tense meeting. He wants to buy the five points. Bill the Butcher's not having it. Now we got to start buying up people. 
uh, and doing, you know, placing markers in the middle of the street. Cars are hitting them. Doesn't matter. They're for quails. Uh, he's trying to buy up all the land around it to get underneath it. But what I think is Pipeline. we are going to have a couple of gangs of New York, basically. We're going to have the, what are they called? The traditionalists? Uh, the, no, the, the, it's, uh, the, oh, shit, the natives. Which one? Racists. Like is the what natives. Called. Natives, natives. The natives. <laughs> yeah, the, the nativists. nativists. I'm and sure. then yeah. the I'm Bowery no Boys, joke. the Pug Uglies. <laughs> yeah. The Dead Rabbits. Dead the Rabbits. Dead Rabbits. The fucking John C. Rileys. The, <laughs> the what are they called? Catfish. Like what? The Clunkers. The Clubbers. The, the Cameron Crushers. Diaz's. The Crushers. The Skips. Yeah. I think the Crushers. I do have are to say police. that I, I really, while I was watching Gangs of New York, I was like, man, you know which gang movie has better gang names? It's the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, is the this Dead like... Rabbits is pretty like presumptive. Like, why would you have that? Hey, we're the Dead Rabbits. Oh, we don't have a lot of spirit, I guess, do we? Yeah. Would you imagine like a ma- high school mascot called the Losers? The Dead It'd Jedi. Be bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I imagine we're going to have a battle for New York here. Uh, with the the gangs that Bill the Butcher has uh, versus the employees of Daniel Plainview, <laughs> and also the people Nick, I think we discussed like the people he has bought. Also yeah. with uh, I, think, I forget the Tweed, I think his name is the politician's influence. Yeah. So, like I bet you, and also is DiCaprio in this universe? Because if so, I'm pretty sure. Pla- I hear that you hate Bill the Butcher. So do I. <laughs> Uh, you want to work for me? And by the way, do you pardon? Can I rename you from Amsterdam to HW? Would you mind that? <laughs> oh my shillelagh! That's what Leo says back. To yeah, him. Oh shillelagh! No, no, no. Uh, like, uh, Daniel Pepe walks up to him and pretends like he can't hear. <laughs> he automatically assumes that. <laughs> yeah, and I can hear what you're saying. Oh, can you? I'm sorry. I just assumed. If you work for me, you'll have Oscars coming out of your ears. Okay? <laughs> They'll be coming straight out of your ears. You won't have to get attacked by a bear for one. I hate the. <laughs> I hate to consider that Oscars, Oscars are anything but a luxury. Uh, <laughs> you want to? I have to bring you boys back in again. Sorry. So let's say that a couple of them, Daniel Plainview splits off. Maybe he gets the Pug Uglies, he gets the Skull Crushers, he gets the John C. Rileys, the Dead Rabbits, um, the, the Dead Wabbits. As a, as yeah, he's got the Bowery Boys. Okay, that's he what gets the, the three he gets that the I Warriors. Uh, <laughs> the, the Steve Warriors, Rolls, show. The Steve Bruce. Yeah, and the baseball guys. <laughs> the Sam and the. The les- no, I'm talking about the guys that literally had, like, paint and baseball uh, uniforms on in the Warriors. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Sandlot, Nick. So. Shut up. But he I'm also gets maybe you, the, Corey, the Lizzies, which were, like, the lesbian gang. I'm asking you, Corey, Warriors. can you dig it? The orphans. Do what? Yeah, can you dig it? I can, can dig it. Yes, I can dig it. Can you dig it? Okay. Perfect. So... Are you saying that a lady comes out and is like, hey, all you boppers out <laughs> yeah. there. All you oil men <laughs> and gangsters. <laughs> gonna have a bloodbath tonight. Maybe, like, Bill the Butcher has, like, a Ooh. knife show with, like, HW or something. <laughs> like, just to make Daniel Payne be really mad. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, so. What was he tasting? We're, they both walk out into the street. Armed to the teeth. Obviously, Daniel Plainview's guys have a bunch of chair legs. Uh. Because they're just impl- they have wrenches, maybe <laughs> yeah, uh, drills, I guess, and a couple of guns too. Fuck it, yeah, those guns. small pistol gun thingies, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Bill the Butcher comes out. He's got his knives. He's got his mustache. He's got his stove pi- stove pipe hat. Well, they both have mustaches, uh, just to be clear. You're right. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, How else would yeah, I would have so, concluded my research? Yeah, there's a, a face off in the making, and we're gonna get to it. When we come back from this break. But first, let me tell you guys, since we're talking about Martin Scorsese, you're going to want to look up the Scorsese Challenge on YouTube. It's really good. Uh, Bottoms Up Productions. We made a sketch about Martin Scorsese. I just want to plug our like 12-year-old... yeah, our ten year old YouTube channel. Right. It literally stars a hundred a hundred percent of the cast is literally in this podcast. So, you know, check it out. And uh it also uh yeah, it was also uh dreamed up by our number one fan, Jeremy, Jeremy Dugan. Dugan. He's the he's the one who created the idea, so you're gonna wanna check that sketch out while we take this break. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, those videos over at 
youtube.com backslash bottoms up prod. Just get me Shut all the, the time. Oh, up. man, especially that Scorsese challenge. <laughs> the Scorsese challenge is so relevant. Ten years to old. This episode. Gross. I don't know why I'm plugging a YouTube channel that's ten years old and we haven't updated it in like hey, eight. Hey, it's eight years old. That you okay. don't plan to update. <laughs> You're sending them to a it's, dead end. <laughs> It's always hey, a dead end, dude. Like, do they you can, like not watch like movie like Breaking Bad is a dead end. Well, yeah, I mean, we can give them. You know, we got like thirty videos. That that means like thirty hours of content because they're all so fucking long. So that's Joey, just I want to jo- entertain the people. Joey, I want no one else to succeed at the YouTube game. Okay. Yeah, we're coming for you. <laughs> Too late, Corey. Pewdie, PewDiePie <laughs> is he on YouTube or is he on Twitch? Twitch? Shut I have up! no idea. You're so old. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Will Smith. It's rewind time, baby. <laughs> Let's go skydive and put it on Facebook, and uh, yeah, we'll be coming for you, Jack Black. The Jables are jabling. Any yeah, other YouTubes you guys want to show? He's been up? all over the place on YouTube lately. Now that you bring it up, that's crazy. All right, life's a dead end. Let's uh, get to the dead end of this episode. I podcast with a it. bunch of boomers. Oh no, fuck you! You're a Karen, Joe. You got the Karen hair and everything. Yeah, dude. Where's your gun at? You guys wish you my had brother's my always asking hair. for the manager. You wish you had my fucking hair. You know whose hair I wish I actually had was uh, Daniel Plainview's mustache. Speaking of, <laughs> we've come to a decision, everybody. <laughs> we thought that perhaps maybe I should win for a second time in a row after taking two just absolutely abysmal losses in the first part of this season. Guys, I, I do want to remind you, <laughs> audience, episodes. that we are halfway... We are halfway through the season, uh, uh, season five, and it only took us, what, seven months? Yeah, and I want to remind you, audience, that I've won three out of four times, so I'm pretty, I'm, yeah, I'm the best. Yeah, that's I, true. I don't, want, I don't want anyone else to succeed, okay? I have a competition in me. <laughs> uh, yes, that's right. Daniel Plainview is defeating Bo- Bill the Butcher this week, and let me and Corey tell you how that's going to happen. Yes. Nick, set so, the stage hey. for us, my friend. Hit me! So we set the stage before the break of these two gangs squaring up. Mm-hmm. Now let me wub wub you back to a little <laughs> meeting between Bill the Butcher and Daniel Plainview. A very formal meeting, like kind of like in the movie Gangs of New York, where they're they're setting the terms, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So the whole time, like Bill the Butcher's like, oh, yeah, a, a sort of parlay to plan yes. plan the gang fight. To decide the uh, the fate of the five points and yeah, what's lo- apparently underneath it once and for all. Yeah, the location, the, the terms, uh, when it starts, all, the, all that good uh, good dueling stuff. Yeah, so Bill the Butcher's like, okay, obviously we're going to use knives, we're going to use bats, you know, we're going to use clubs. And, 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 and bowling pins. <laughs> and Daniel Plainview's like, oh, yes, of course, of course, oh. yes, whatever you want. I need, I need bowling pins in the fight. It's just a weird thing <laughs> I have. I, I love bowling. I'm a bowling man. My son needs plenty of bowling. The doctor says that he needs plenty of bowling. Let's get his hearing back. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they have the meeting. The terms are agreed upon. Cut back to the gang, Gangs of New York style fight. Yeah, yeah. Bill um, the Butcher's like, you know, uh, sharpening his knives. Daniel Plainview's sharpening his bowling pins, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, as the fight starts, they run at each other. I should say that uh, the nativists run at the. Uh, all the plain view employees. The plain views, we'll call them. Yeah, the plain views. Uh, and they run on them with their sharp objects, their blunt objects, and then. But but all- Nick, I thought, I thought we get to mention like very clear in this meeting before. Plain view is like plain view is like saying whatever Bill the Butcher wants to hear, right? So Bill the Butcher's like no pistols, and plain view's like yeah, f- that's fine, that's fine. But what does plain view's men have at this fight? It's a bunch of pistols. They of just course. mow down because Bill the Butcher's fuck, whole gang. An oil fuck line. truces. Oh. Fuck honor. Plainview does not care about that. Man, I thought you guys were going to pull the secret weapon of. It turns out there's a bunch of guys on the roofs and they're just dropping like uh, oh, oil pipes. Oh, maybe they are too. Who down, knows, like, dude? But the point is that they're not following the rules of the several agreement. Dudes I thought, yeah, they're not way. fighting fair. I thought you guys yeah. were going to bring the secret element of bad fight choreography. <laughs> While like <laughs> well, the Jurassic Park theme played on a melodica plays. Na, 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 no, that's too good. Yeah. That's too good of a, a melody. It has to be much worse oh, okay. than that because. Can you imagine like a big pit of oil 
It's bubbling because a dinosaur is walking towards it. Okay, there we go. Let's add a little bit of spice to it. Uh, the the men start to run. A bunch of oil comes in front of them. They're all slipping and falling. They're goofing. It's kind of like a bitty hill thing going on. For yeah, a and and the uh, all the plate. All the plane views are just like they're just killing these dudes while they're on the ground, slipping and sliding. And but the bunch uh, is like dodging. He's taking a good fight. He's killing some folks. He's not getting killed, but he realizes in the fight, I think that uh, Daniel Plainview is nowhere to be found. Yeah, Daniel Plainview is not in this fight. He pays for people to fight for him. Yeah, he's like in some like wooden shack, watching it with a telescope from afar. You know? Did he hire yeah. uh, Daniel so, Day Lewis from Lincoln to be in the fight for him? <laughs> Uh, we're in charge of this narrative, not you, Joey. So, uh... And they're like, Daniel, the five points is burning! And he's like, who cares, man? There's a whole There's ocean a whole of oil beneath our feet! of oil under there. Yeah, so, uh, that's what he's saying from far away. Bill the Butcher <laughs> manages to get away, uh, and he stumbles into one of his bars, uh, in the five points, only to see a man sitting at a table with a napkin on his head. With his, yeah, it's like, with, a, with his son, like, who the hell is God that guy? damn it. And the... Uh, and then this guy with a handkerchief goes, Did you hear? Bill the Butcher tried to fight me in a fight. But he was a, he looked like a fool, didn't he? He didn't bring any guns at all. <laughs> I told you what I was going to do, Bill the Butcher. <laughs> so Bill the Butcher's like, you know, plain view, knowing Bill the Butcher is very, you know, short the temper, I guess you could say. Uh, Bill the Butcher's like, all right, all right, I'll show you what I can do, uh, Daniel Plainview. Everyone here in this bar, oh, you know, I own them. This is my place, five points. And he tries to fight Daniel Plainview, and Daniel Plainview's like, look around you, you fool. Everyone in that bar is a Plainview now. Not... Yeah, they... Not a not a butcher. Yes. So, is yeah, it, they turn on Bill the is Butcher. Is like being John they, Malkovich, where everyone turns around and it's Daniel Day-Lewis? <laughs> yeah, everyone's yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis. No, but everyone has Daniel Day-Lewis dollars. They might as well in their wallets, because that's how he gets them, like... <laughs> when when Bill the Butcher turns around, they're all holding like wads of cash in their hand. <laughs> like, you know, hey, do you want to dodge the draft, which apparently that movie was about? I'll give you three hundred dollars, and you cannot <laughs> be part of Bill the Butcher's gang. I'll give you three hundred Plainview dollars. <laughs> three hundred Plainview dollars. You'll have Plainview dollars coming out of your ears, man. So. These are called quail bucks, okay? <laughs> you, you use them. Uh, it's kind of like regular money, but not quite. Not we're, we're changing the currency in, in the five points. What's but better nonetheless. than money, ladies and gentlemen? Not money. Oh, it's like its own <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis ecosystem. Like, it's just yeah. like, get your Daniel dollars. It's way better than regular dollars. Kind of like Bitcoin. Yeah, you remember that, you remember yeah. that uh, quote in uh, Derby Blood where it's, I want no other currency to succeed besides my currency. <laughs> yeah, so, I remember uh, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah so scene. they yeah. uh they they grab Bill the Butcher and uh Daniel Plainview asks for his order to be fulfilled now and yeah. the bartender hands him a bowling pin and he beats him to death with a bowling pin. He hands him Obviously. Two in a bowling pin. <laughs> Did you think we were going to change that? Fuck you. Yeah. We had to go there. I know it was the easy way out but it's fucking funny. Yeah. And also just an audience if you're wondering, yes, every building has a bowling pin for Daniel Plainview just in case. Oh, it's in like yeah. a glass just case. In case. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like a, break, it's break, like a breaking cases. Sure yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a for emergencies only, ladies and there's gentlemen. There's like a yeah. on the side of it. There's like a tiny bowling pin that you break the glass for the real bowling pin. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's canon now. Um, that's fucking great. <laughs> so, uh, with Bill the Butcher <laughs> taken care of and Daniel Plainview. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking it was a tiny pistol that you had to no, shoot man, the glass No, man, it's like bowling there. pits way better. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. that, tick- that tickled me. Yeah, after all of the tickled, bowling pins... After all of the bowling pins are installed in New York, we cut to Daniel Plainview in his bowling alley, the first bowling alley in New York City. Which he Indoor built. bowling alley. Yeah, he's, yeah, he built. I invented it. And this is some time later. Bill the Butcher has been pinned, so to speak, uh, murdered in this bar, <laughs> but DiCaprio, uh, Amsterdam's like, oh yes, finally, but the butcher's out of here. I can now, the Irish can now take five points. I'm going to make a deal with Daniel Plainview and settle this once and for all. So he goes in and asks, he's like, ah, hello, I'm, you know, I'm looking to sell, I would like to sell the five points to you for the oil underneath And then it. he's like, I'm you know, not a corp, and he's like, no, you're a corp, and he's like, I'm not a corp. 
That was some departed uh, <laughs> improv pl- for you guys. Yeah, yeah, we, we, all, we all got it, Joe. You did a good yep. job. And then Daniel played. Yeah. Whoa. And he's ahead, like, Tom. we're not the dead rabbits anymore. We're the wolves of <laughs> oh, Wall Street. Oh, I like that. Okay. The wolf. And, and then a bear comes out. Okay, you know, so you want to own? <laughs> we're, we're the we're the Smeos. <laughs> the Smeos of Wall Street. Let me show yeah. you some oh. Smleems. And Daniel Plainview is so high <laughs> on Quaaludes, y'all, that it doesn't Smleams. even matter. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. So Plainview is like, okay, so you want to make a deal with five points. That's, that sounds great. Okay, I want you to tell me that Liam Neeson was never a priest and Paul the Butcher <laughs> was a superstition. <laughs> and, the cabaret is like, ah, uh, that's not true, man. I can't. That's not. Like, I can't do an Irish accent very well. That's not true. Oh, my shillelagh. Uh, potatoes. Uh, shillelagh. <laughs> and uh, famine, <laughs> y'all. And he says that. He's like, you want this? You want this good, good bowling money? You're gonna say that he's not a <laughs> priest. Yeah. Can't hear you. I do back. want the good, good bowling money. <laughs> yeah, to s- scream it so the gang members in the back can hear. Imagine this is a whole bar full of your gang, and uh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Liam Neeson wasn't a real priest, and Bill the Butcher was a superstition. So, uh, and then he uh, informs him about uh, you know slant draining. Slant draining uh, of the oil, because I own everything around five points. I own the one point, the two point, the three <laughs> point, the four point. So I own the five points. I own the pug uglies. I own the wampers. I own the baseball boys. There you go. <laughs> I own the mean streets. I own the wolf of Wall Street. I own them all. I own Jonah Hill's yeah. dick. <laughs> did, you and, see uh, it? did you see I was impressed? I, I don't want to th- be weird, but I was kind of impressed. I own the quails and I own the quaaludes. The quaaludes are out of business. I own them all. <laughs> I want no other quaaludes to succeed. Sorry. So it, it uh, yeah, fades out and fades into New York City being built. Yeah, with right. But right. instead of all the buildings, it's just a bunch of derricks everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. The Empire State Building is a huge derrick. Yeah. Everything he, in New York is just because of Daniel Plainview's influence is just a bunch of oil rigs and derricks. But don't worry, audience. If you were concerned, it's Really fucking terrible green screen of Derek's being built across New York City. Man, Joey. <laughs> I love how Joey always has an insult for gangs of New York, no matter what we say. And he starts his speech all over again as he's about to unveil the 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 uh, Empire State Building. He pulls the cloth off the whole building, Obviously. which kind of makes sense. Like, uh, and it's the think it's the it, biggest it, Derek in the world. Because like the end of the movie is 1927. Like th- what three years later. The Empire State Building is, is open, so he's like, ladies and gentlemen, I want to... <laughs> yeah. He's like, a huge curtain, by the way, a huge curtain, the biggest curtain you've yeah. ever seen covering the Empire yeah. State Building. <laughs> it's really big. So, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, now New York City is just being mined for oil. Yeah, and then there's a, there's a burial ground with uh, Bill the Butcher that gets forgotten uh, mm-hmm. because of time and because Bad of... Bad uh, green screen. I want no other cemeteries to succeed. <laughs> I, uh... And then time passes, and eventually an oil drill goes right into his grave <laughs> to get the oil. Because we all know that oil is dinosaur Whoa. bones. <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> and it sucks up his glass yeah. eye. Uh, and eventually, and uh, you know, all of our skeleton, human skeleton bones will turn into oil, too. And, and our future children will use us to power their flying cars. With their giant backdrop of bad green screen. All right, I'm going to end this podcast now so Joey will stop doing that. <laughs> Just real uh, fast, I want to say that Plainview talks about at the end about how, like, the last man he killed that was honorable was 15 years ago. It was a great man, and uh, it was, his name was Bill the Butcher. And he has a portrait yep. in the Empire State, Empire State Building on the first floor of Bill yeah. the Butcher. The to first this floor day, of the ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then he says, uh, I abandoned my butcher. butcher! Butcher in a basket! I yeah, abandoned my butcher! Outlawed. Butcher in a basket. Meat is outlawed. Yeah. Yep. Only oil. Only- You'll have bread uh, coming out of yours, but not meat, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Very Real Tournament. We're halfway through season five we got half the bracket already who's on that bracket i don't know it's been like fucking six months you know it's been forever i can't it's tell you should go you should tell by going back and listening to our episode it's, it's been, been so in, breezy guys we yeah. actually i feel like we never even stopped in the first place yeah we just got right back into it because we're fucking professionals i'm a podcast man yeah um the podcast is to work for me work for me yeah 
So, uh, yeah, so go back and check those out so you can figure out who's in the first half of the bracket. Uh, we're going to be heading into our next episode soon uh, to finish off the season. Four more left. If you want to hear more of our podcast, go back and listen to those episodes. You can check them out at our website. That's vrtcast.com. Everything's there. Also on that website is the other podcast we do. If you haven't checked it out by now, you really should. It's called Very Real Talk. That's been going on during all of this pandemic. We're, uh, you know, we tried to keep that one going at least uh, because that one requires a lot less uh, planning and, uh, you know, time outside the podcast. So we kept that one going. So those episodes are there. Also, you can find all of our episodes on any podcast app, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, CastBox, Podbean, all of them. Please go over there, like, subscribe, rate, review, uh, and please do that for Very Real Talk as well. We'd very much appreciate it. As for next episode, guys, we're going in a backwards trajectory, really. We're going on a steep, steep decline. Uh, Maybe not for Joey because he hated one of the movies we did this time. But uh, we're really flipping things on their head. Uh, next week, the movies you need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> the old gem, the Elijah Wood classic, Cats and Dogs. Versus, I don't know who's in this movie. I'll find out when I watch it, I guess. Probably uh, Larry the, the Cable uh, Guy. <laughs> probably Larry the Cable <laughs> <All> Guy. <laughs> Uh, it's the acclaimed Disney film G-Force. That's right, the gerbil force is coming. Which is funny, because also nominated for 10 Oscars, just yeah. like Gangs of New York. Yeah. Not really. Daniel Day Gerbil. <laughs> I have a gerbil, man. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to own all the gerbil boxes around here. Yeah, we'll figure out exactly what the gerbil force does, who they fight, who the bad guys are, when we all watch that movie in the coming weeks, preparing we for this yet. podcast. I'll tell you that right now. Real quick to hype up the audience, here's who's in Cats and Dogs. We got Give it to Jeff me, Goldblum. I love we it. We got Alec Baldwin. We'll find a way. We okay. got Toby oh, Maguire. Nice. Hell and yeah. Susan Sarandon. Let's fucking go, oh. dude. Man, I'm really <laughs> sorry that I said Elijah Wood when it was Toby Maguire. <laughs> go. Is that what he, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That must make sense. Yeah. Yeah, they're basically the same. Elijah Wood could have been John Spider-Man. Lovitz. Elijah for Spider-Man is what John I say. John Lovitz, Charlton Heston. Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! One of those is not the other It's Charlton Heston. (laughs) The Omega Man himself, baby. The Planet of the Apes himself. (laughs) You bastards! (laughs) You bastard dogs! Yeah. Well, he would say you bitches. You blew it all up, you cats and dogs! (laughs) You bitches! You blew it all up talking to the female dogs, is what I'm saying. Cats don't uh, kill people, dogs okay. kill people. Joey, go ahead and give us the whole cast of G-Force now. I bet, I think Tracy Morgan's in it? I don't I'm know. I'm pretty sure no. he is. Okay. Hold on, I'm getting the actual gravitational force equivalent. Uh, let me let me type in <laughs> film. Let's see what we fucking got here, guys. All right, Let's we got see. I'm very excited. Sam Rockwell, Tracy oh. Morgan, Penelope okay. Cruz, John Whoa. Favreau, Nicolas Cage, Steve Buscemi, Zach Galifianakis, Will N- Arnett, Bill Nighy. Oh! <laughs> You're going too high, man. Oh. <laughs> these, these are fucking... These are stacked, gang. <laughs> these are powerhouse casts. Oh, man. It doesn't matter what the script says or what's on screen. Just know that in a recording booth somewhere... Someone was handing Bill Nye a comical pile of money. All those folks are, are equal to one double DL, which is the whole point of this episode of this podcast. Wow, okay. You're saying one Alec Baldwin plus one Penelope Cruz plus mm-hmm. one Tracy Morgan doesn't even come close to one DDL. Double DL, yeah, get your yeah. shit straight, but yeah, double DL. Oh, D. Bradley okay. Baker, let's go. Whoa. Oh, well, the whole conversation, my whole theory is out the window yeah, now. Yeah, it just, it just straight up fell apart, Corey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know that. So. Yeah. Man, I really kind of expected, Ooh. I don't know why, but I expected Willem Dafoe to be in one of these casts. <laughs> uh, he needed to be there. Um, but yeah, so that is the next episode. Cats and Dogs, not the second Cats and or Man, is someone going to have to watch the second Cats and Dogs movie in order to do this? We haven't figured it out yet, this? but I guess someone will. 
Because that, to me, is kind of like a uh, like a Son of the Mask sort of bastardization of the great classic Cats and Dogs. Nick, I've seen neither of them, so I don't know. Honestly, okay. I hate to, okay. to bring this ending to another street screeching halt, but Will Arnett's okay. character in G-Force is Kip Killian. Isn't that not okay. the small soldier? I think that's like Kip Killum or Kip... Conniver. All right, you're fucking wrong because Kip that sounds butcher. stupid, and uh, <laughs> we had the toys. So it was Kip Killigan. Kip Killigan. Yeah. Again. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just typed in Kip Killigan. It is the guy with the cigar from Small All Soldiers right. and from the previous episode that we did. All right. Let's not waste these good people's time any longer. Uh, yeah. So look forward to that next week. Uh, well, yeah, next episode. And then, in, uh, yeah, until then, I'm a podcast man. I'm bad green screen. I'm, uh, I'm also here. And I'm, I'm a Spotify and, and, and Podbean and, and all the ones. I, I, I'm all of them. I, I like them all. And it hasn't just been real. It's been very real. <laughs>